Welcome to today's video on aminoglycosides. We will be covering their mechanism of action, their selectivity, and some of the clinical aspects which pharmacists need to be aware of. First of all, how these drugs work. Aminoglycosides inhibit the protein synthesis by binding irreversibly to the 30S ribosomal subunit, which in turn prevents the ribosomal assembly, impairs proofreading process, and blocks translocation. So for us to understand their mechanism of action, let's take a quick look at the protein synthesis process that occurs in the bacteria. In this drawing here, which represent the process, first thing to be highlighted is the structure of the ribosome. Ribosomes are like machines that read, process, and then produce all the proteins and enzymes required for cellular growth and development. In bacteria, ribosome is a 70S particle made up of 30S and 50S subunits. Compared to the 80S ribosome found in eukaryotes like a human, the 30S subunit binds messenger RNA and initiates protein synthesis, while the 50S combines with the 30S mRNA complex to form a ribosome, then binds the transfer RNA and catalyzes the building of a protein chain. There are two main binding sites for tRNA molecules. The peptidyl site, or P site, binds the tRNA bearing the growing peptidyl chain, where the acceptor site, or A site, binds the tRNA bearing the next amino acid that needs to be attached to the growing protein. So what happens is that aminoglycosides bind to the 30S part which prevents the two subunits from combining together, and that blocks the initiation of the whole process. Their binding also impairs the process of proofreading, which makes sure no error is happening during translation. So the inhibition of this procedure will result in incooperation of incorrect amino acids leading to the production of faulty proteins. Lastly, one of their believed actions is that they block the translocation. This mechanism is responsible for allowing the movement of mRNA across the ribosome, so new codon can be read. Once it is inhibited, translation will be arrested and it may result in a premature protein. So in short, you can say these drugs work as protein synthesis inhibitor by binding to the 30S subunit. But in case you want detailed explanation on it, we just got that covered. Now the question is, are these drugs bactericidal or bacteriostatic? Before you answer this question, you have to bear in mind one thing, which is the fact that all protein synthesis inhibitors are bacteriostatic when used in low doses, except for aminoglycosides, which are always bactericidal despite the dose used. Last point we have to know is that aminoglycosides love gram-negative, so you will find them working the best against infections caused by this type of bacteria, such as gentamicin, which is an aminoglycoside, is used in the treatment of pneumonia caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae, which is a gram-negative bacteria. The difference in the action against gram-positive and gram-negative of these drugs is thought to be due to the membrane structure of these two bacteria. In gram-negative, which we will be focusing on for these drugs, 
there is a double membrane structure consisting of outer and inner membranes separated by periplasmic layer, which is also known as the cell wall. The outer membrane is negatively charged and aminoglycosides, as the name suggests, are made of basic amino groups that holds positive charges. Thus, an ionic interaction between these groups in the drug and the outer surface of the membrane may take place. And this results in activation of channels in the outer membrane called porins, which the drug can pass through into the cell. However, gram-positive lack the outer membrane, and it consists of only the inner membrane covered by a cell wall. So no ionic interaction can possibly occur, hence no entry of these hydrophilic drugs. Here we have some examples of these drugs. First we got streptomycin, which is the first isolated aminoglycoside. Also we have gentamicin, topramycin, amikacin, neomycin, and bermomycin. Now comes the selectivity. How these drugs are able to recognize the bacterial cell within our body and target it without inhibiting our own cells? The answer to this question lies in two main reasons, which are first, human cells contain only plasma membrane, so there is no double membrane structure. Hence, Different diffusion rates through the cell barriers of bacteria versus human or mammalian cells. In bacteria, aminoglycosides diffuse more into the cell compared to human. So these drugs will not enter our cell as much as they enter the bacteria. The second reason is that ribosomes in bacteria are different in structure from those in a human. As we said earlier in this video, the ribosome in the bacteria is a 70S particle, while in a human, it's much bigger, it is 80S, and it has much lower binding affinity for the aminoglycosides compared to the bacteria. Lastly, there are clinical aspects. Aminoglycosides are polar hydrophilic drugs because of the amine and the guanidine groups, as you can see in streptomycin chemical structure, thus they can't pass the biological membrane and they are not well absorbed from the intestine. Therefore, they are usually given as IV, intramuscular, or topically. They are also unable to cross the blood-brain barrier and so they cannot be used for the treatment of meningitis unless they are injected directly into the CNS. The clinical use of these drugs is limited by their serious side effects, which can be as irreversible vestibular and cochlear toxicity and reversible nephrotoxicity. Also, aminoglycosides are excreted unchanged in the urine, which must be an alert when given to patient with renal problems as dose adjustment is required. To avoid their possible side effects, these drugs cannot be given beyond 48 hours when used empirically because this treatment is not based on microbiology, culture, and sensitivity tests yet. Finally, their activity specifically against gram-positive can be increased when given with other agents that disrupt cell wall synthesis, such as beta-lactam antibiotic. And with this, we reach the end of this video. I hope you find it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.